Guten Tag, students. Welcome back. Mr. Land here. Let's do a lesson. Lab symbols. Hashtag peace. All symbols, folks. In the lab, we have to know what our lab symbols are trying to tell us. We see symbols everywhere in life. We're built on them. Our eyesight is uh, acute and picks up a symbol, and immediately we interpret that symbol. So here are some favorite symbols, that, and I'm sure, do you know them all? Let's take a look. What do we have first? We got the Twitter as my mom likes to call it. How about Nike? What about this next one here? That's an Apple. Downright, Google Chrome. I bet you don't know those last two. <laughs> well, they're a little older. That's a rock band group called the Rolling Stones. You might want to ask your parents about that one. And then that's Shell Gasoline. If you saw these anywhere in life, you would know what they are. Companies are smart to design their brand around an image. What about superheroes? Do you know those? How about Superman? I'm sure you know Batman, The Flash, Captain America, Green Lantern, Spider-Man. Kids, please understand how important symbols are in life. They're everywhere. Everything revolves around a symbol almost. How about on the road when you're driving? Well, you're not driving because you probably don't reach the pedals yet. But symbols on the road when your parents drive, that means no parking. What about this one in the middle? Pedestrians, sorry, the one on the right. That means people walking. The one in the middle, that's a traffic light. How about the ones on the bottom? You ever seen those? That means stop sign ahead. And what about this one with the lines? You know what that one means? Slippery when wet and there might be ice. What about your food? The ones you eat. There's symbols there too. You got McDonald's, Burger King. Did you recognize that one? BK, how about this old man right here with the, with the goatee? That's KFC, Domino's Pizza. And then their competitor right under there, Pizza the Hut. We got chilies, because you recognize the chili. What about that one with the apple? Oh, sorry, the lobster. That's red lobster, Applebee's, and that one's TGI Fridays, which we don't have in the valley anymore. So let's look at some symbols in the lab. Symbols make our lives easier to navigate. And since sometimes in the lab we have so many dangerous things to work with, we have to see the symbols so that we know what we're dealing with, what's hazardous. So our symbols are just a shortcut to teach us how to protect ourselves and what we're working with or what we're dealing with. So I want you to be ready to draw the symbols and to describe its meaning in your Cornell notes on the right hand side. So when we say don't play around or don't horseplay, we mean no horseplaying. <laughs> Horsey says nay. I'm just kidding. But no, no horseplay in the lab. That's an actual rule. So what about this one? What symbol is this one? Is this trying to convey to you its message? This one's an easy one. This is it, the clothing or dress code of a laboratory. That's a lab apron, by the way. So this means that in the lab, you might be working with a chemical or substance that could uh, stain your clothes. And the apron is there to protect. Now, dress code for girls is a little different because of one specific thing. Usually, don't don't mean to sing about the girls, but because they have a lot of this going on. <laughs> okay, that's a lot of hair. Girls, hair always pulled back tied to the back so it's not hanging in front of your face like that little girl from the poor from the ring you know what i mean let's just get that out of the face please so let's move on to the next one what do you think this symbol is that's an easy one right this is eyewear eye safety or goggles the goggles should be worn in a lab for certain things not everything but the risk here is that you might be working with a chemical again and it may cause some splashing so apron for clothes Goggles for the eyes, for splashing. Remember from our lab safety cartoon, we have the eye wash, which is also to flush out our eyes in case we get any chemical in them. So this one is a biggie for dress code as well. Um, this is a really famous poster. I know it's really morbid, but when you read it, it says, Carol never wore her safety goggles. Now she doesn't need them. I actually have this poster. Whenever the kids read it, they usually stare at it like, what is this, sir? I always tell them, look, this is a really old famous poster. It's a really serious tone. Like, in other words, wear your goggles, man. Wear them. That's what that poster is. How about this symbol right here? Can you tell? Sure you can. I think you can tell, right? That would be the electrical safety or electricity symbol. Extra care should be taken if you are working at a table where there is electricity because your substances or liquids, especially what liquid is the most important here? Water 
can mix and combine and electrocute you. You must be aware that you have electrical outlets, guys, at your lab tables. They are present next to the, the actual faucets, okay? So this is electrical safety. Um, here's a link to a news article about uh, what electrocution is like in real life. People actually lose their lives and they're just unaware that electrical wires can be torn and when they touch liquid water, that is an instant current and that can lead to electrocution. Um, if you want to check out the uh, the link there, um, there's some real life situations that are happening there with electrocution. Let's go on to another symbol. How about this one? No, it's not a scissor symbol like when we're cutting foldables. But see how that one kind of connects? This means that we are dealing with sharp objects. Sharp objects aren't just scissors, guys. They could be scalpels. They could be needles. They could be pincers. This means that you must be careful when you are cutting and that we cut away from the body, not to the body, but away from the body. And if there is a bleeding precaution, we must know where the first aid kit is. Talk to your teacher and he'll tell you where that's at. That would be me. This is a real life scenario here. Um, it's very real. Scissors don't look sharp, but they can cut, kids. That's a real life situation, all right? Let's be safe with the scissors. How about this one? What is this symbol? This symbol right here is telling us, obviously, that something is breaking. That is glassware. This means that whenever we use glass, which is a lot of times in the lab, we have to be careful if it breaks. Accidents happen, kids. What's the first thing you should do if you break a glassware? No, don't pick it up. No. No, you got to tell Mr. Lamb. I'm the one that cleans the glassware, not you. Immediately, kids reach for the glassware because they think that they did something bad, and they want to reach for it and grab it and pick it up to clean it. Please don't do that. If it's an accident, that's okay. That happens. I do it all the time myself. Just let me know. I'll go by, clean it up, get you a new tool, or like a beaker or a flask, and you're ready to move on again. So please be careful with the glass if it breaks. How about this one right here? Oh, this is one of my favorites. I actually have a really cool story to tell if you want to know. Ask me in class about what the symbol is. This is the fume safety or chemical fumes. What this means is that chemicals are sometimes so potent and dangerous that they give off a smell. Even the ones that aren't dangerous give off a smell, like vinegar or acetic acid, for example, has a certain smell. So you must know that certain chemicals have a smell and that you must use the fume hood, which is that huge metal structure in the back where we can actually ventilate the fumes out of the building so that they don't circulate and stay in there. So in this case, if we have a fume situation where a chemical is very strong, um, it's always wise to never smell the fume directly, like because that fume might actually be something like an acid and might burn the inside lining of your nose. That's a no-no. So what we do is we use the wafting technique. The wafting technique is simply taking one's hand and bringing the smell to your fume to your nose. We do, some kids call it whiffing, but no, it's not whiffing, it's wafting. We use our free hand, we cup the smell, the odor, and we bring it to our nose. And we can actually smell it this way. This is the proper technique. Wafting is the technique here. Um, everybody knows what that's like, right? You've got the good smells and the bad smells, right? Sometimes you, you know what bad smells I'm talking about, right? And it just makes you cry, right? Like the onions or something else. And then you got the good smells that make you feel good. Did you know that the, no that the nose remembers almost every smell that you've ever smelled? That's it's it's amazing. The, the nose is a beautiful thing. So let's take a look at this one. This one's already popping around with the kids when they do their projects. This is not the pirate symbol, but this is the poison symbol. We see this one at home in our cleaners, in our detergents, in the in the Home Depot section. We see this one all the time. This is one of the most universally rec recognized symbols in the world. It means that you are dealing with a hazardous harmful or even explosive poisonous um, chemical here. Um, this one is it speaks for itself. We see it all the time, everywhere. Let's go on to another one. How about this one? Oh, this one's an easy one. Kids are always amazed whenever they see this one in lab, right? This one is flames or fire. Girls, hair. Got to bring the hair back. Got to bring the hair back. Keep your sleeves back in case you're ever working with uh, with fire. We have to know where the fire extinguisher is. We have a fire extinguisher in the hallway and also in the laboratory. We have a we have a um, a fire extinguisher in the back of the room. We also use a fire blanket. A fire blanket. It looks like 
this and it's actually made of fireproof material so either one of these can do if we have a small flame breakout the uh, extinguisher has compressed carbon dioxide and I can show you how to work one of those I won't actually work it because it would be uh, it have to be replaced but I can I can pull one out and teach you how to use it and the fire blanket is really easy to use all we do is we smother things that are on fire I promise that won't ever be the case if there's ever fire I will work with it and I'll let you take a look at it so you can be all hypnotized like ooh fire yeah, the kids do that all the time. How about this one? This one comes into play sometimes. No, that doesn't mean that I'm break dancing or that I'm 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 hanging out at the dance. No, this one is physical safety. This one means that an activity is going to happen and it's kind of physical in nature. Like if I say, "Hey, we're going to go outside and we're going to do tug of war," right? And you have a medical condition and you can't really uh pull that hard outside. You have to let me know. Talk to me to let me know, "Sir, I'm kind of injured. This is my situation and I can't work outside." You must do this from time to time because sometimes I do have labs that we go outside and do some fun stuff. So let me know if you're physically uh, unable to do so. Here we have another one. This one isn't the cooking mitt. No, it's not the washing gloves. This is the thermal safety. Thermal meaning fire. So whenever we heat up glassware, it doesn't look hot because it's glass. So what happens is that kids can make the mistake like at home when you're cooking and they touch the pan or they touch the glassware and it's hot. And then they're like, ah! And then they don't realize that they've just burnt themselves up to second or third degree burns. Guys, you must be wary when heating or boiling glassware. It doesn't look hot, so we need to know that our thermal safety gloves are available to help us touch and remove glassware from heated lessons. So these are the symbols here that I want you to know. Please uh, get, draw them and write them down. And we'll talk about them a little more in class and about your project as well. Like President Obama says, he's very serious about your lab safety, and so am I. So kids, I want to say thank you, and I will see you on the flip side.